Hi, my name is George Garcia, and I'm a community manager with Fusion 360 Electronics and Eagle. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the signal integrity extension in Fusion 360 to simulate your 2D PCB to analyze signal integrity issues. So to begin, we have this air sensor demo board, and everything we're going to be showing is going to happen on the 2D PCB. So let's go into the 2D PCB. And there's many signals we could analyze within this board. For example, we have some clock signals for an NRF module, but I'm going to be focusing on the USB signals of this microcontroller. So we want to be running USB 2.0, which can do a max speed of 480 megabits per second. And we're going to see if I zoom in enough, we have our DP and our DN. Those are our two USB signals that we want to analyze. So if you have the extension already enabled, you'll be able to find it under the simulation menu. And you can click Analyze Signal, and it will open the Analyze Signal panel. Now you can access all of your extensions by clicking here on the extensions menu. And you'll be able to see the signal integrity extension on the bottom left. Now using the signal integrity extension is really simple. You just select the signal that you want to analyze. You'll notice that now it's in the signal field of the new analysis under Analyze Signal. You can specify a target impedance or not. If you don't specify a target impedance, then it will just show you the complete impedance profile of the trace. If you do specify a target impedance, then it will show you variations or deviations from that target impedance. So in our case, because this is a USB signal, we are going to specify a target impedance of 45 ohms with a tolerance of 15%. The USB specification specifies a differential impedance, in other words, both traces, of 90. So for a single trace, it's 45 with a plus minus 15% tolerance. So once we've entered this information, all we have to do is click Analyze Signal. So now that we've analyzed our signal, we're going to see that we have a heat map of the trace with the various impedances along its length. Now what information does the signal integrity extension give us? So let's go ahead and zoom out so we can look at the entirety of the trace. So notice on the right, we have this heat map showing the full range of impedance that the trace experiences, going from 66.3 on the low end to 86 ohms on the high end, way outside of our 45 ohm requirement. Now if we look here on the table in the results section, you're going to notice that we get lots of information. The impedance, the length, the time delay, the parameters are calculated on a segment by segment basis. So if you notice, we have at the top, we have this path field, which gives you all of the parameters for the entire trace. But we can individually see each segment, and you'll see that it highlights on the right side. Now, if we look at the parameters we're obtaining, we're obtaining the total length, we're obtaining the impedance range, we're obtaining time delay, we're obtaining resistance, capacitance, again, the range, segment by segment, and the total inductance of the trace. Now you'll notice USB signals are a differential pair. So what if I want to analyze the second signal? Well, I can very easily do that. I can just go ahead and enter the signal now, D underscore N. And again, I click Analyze Signal. Now what you're going to notice is the previous results are still here. So if I lower the, the tree, or if I close up the tree, we'll see that the DP results are still there. They're time stamped, so you'll know exactly when the simulation was run. And we can very easily switch between them, as you can see here. I just click, and I can switch between them. So you can have multiple traces analyzed and then compare the results. Additionally, we can analyze at different frequencies. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And we're going to observe now the variations on DP. Sorry, on DN. And we can switch between them. And we can see that we have some work to do. There's a lot of impedance variation on these traces. 
and they're both way out of spec. In the next video, we're going to analyze how we can use the insight that the signal integrity extension has given us in order to be able to correct our signal integrity problems. See you in the next one.